well ahead of uh, Birmingham. Birmingham always likes to be in pole position in terms of content and numbers for um, these events, but it would be really fantastic to see Bradford at, right at the, the top of, um, of that table for the next Viva Palestina. One of the things that um, really stays with me when I, um, when I look back at that uh, DVD was something one of the convoy members said and he said about the Palestinians that uh, they know what terror is and they know who the terrorists are. I don't think there's a single person in here today um, would, uh, would be able to disagree with that. We know who the terrorists are and they're not Muslims, that's for sure. We saw what the terrorists did in Gaza we saw the chemical weapons that they used, we saw the shells, the devastation, there's still no rebuilding going on. We have to show not only our brothers and sisters in Gaza that we care, we have to show the rest of the world that we care. When I embraced Islam in 2003, I said I had joined the biggest and the best family in the world and I still mean that and I was so proud when uh, we drove into Gaza with more than 80% of the people on board, brothers and sisters. It didn't go down that well when we arrived in Morocco, the authorities were looking saying we thought this was a British convoy, we did look more Tora Bora than Twickenham but um, but it, 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 it was uh, it, it was a great sense of achievement, as I say, when we finally got into um, Gaza. Now, there are some sisters who said to me earlier today, what can I do? I can't go to Gaza. I would love to, but I'm bringing up um, a, a family. And I realize that not everybody who wants to go will actually be able to come on the convoy. There are going to be lots of events like this, raising awareness, raising funds. Um, I won't go too much into the, the boycotting issues because they were already um, covered very, very well, but suffice to say, Ramadan is coming up and Israel tries to sell dates. It must make the Zionists laugh their heads off when they sell dates to Muslims, especially during our, um, our holy month. So really, be very wary where you buy your dates from. Ask the supplier where are the dates coming from. Not the packaging, because they use all sorts of trickery. Um, and. Um, there's a, a, a leaflet here which uh, was, was handed to me from um, Friends of Al-Aqsa and uh, there's a list there of the, the dates that uh, the Israelis um, try and sell. And I'll just briefly read this uh, out from uh, Friends of Al-Aqsa with United for Palestine in Bradford, a very active fan at the moment. Uh, to educate people about the consequences of buying Israeli dates. I am placing one of our leaflets along with this letter for you to browse. We will greatly appreciate it if you could make it, um, well I said I would make this announcement, and that, um, that I've done that. And somebody, and she's also written, it would also be important to highlight that the brand Coca-Cola is a pro-Israeli company, and this really needs to be boycotted in the strongest terms. Now then, I can see an empty bottle of Coca-Cola over there. I hope that this is the last bottle of Coca-Cola I ever see when I visit the Islamic Republic of Bradford. <laughs> Buying Coca-Cola, you may as well give the money directly to the Israeli soldiers to buy bullets to put in Palestinian children. Don't buy Coca-Cola and other brands. 
that support the Israeli state. So if you're wondering, if you can't come on Viva Palestina with us, start shopping with a conscience, educate your children and tell them we're not going to buy that brand, there are other brands, there are other drinks that, uh, that we can do and, uh, and start to educate your children. Get in touch with your politicians and sign petitions. Join in campaigns, join in protests. And I know that there are people out there who will say, oh, what's the point? What can my signature do? I don't know how many of you are on Facebook. I have a very active Facebook account. And when I discovered that uh, the Zionist state of Israel was promoting holidays in the, on adverts in the London Underground, and these maps of Israel had actually wiped Gaza off the map. Gaza uh, wasn't labelled, the Golan Heights weren't labelled, the West Bank had disappeared, and so I urged everybody on my Facebook account to contact the Advertising Standards Authority. More than 400 people complained. I know that the Islamic Human Rights Commission also mobilized their people and, the, um, and many other Palestinian groups organized their people. As a result, that advert was torn down and the Israeli Tourist Board was told no more adverts that are misleading like that. So it was a victory. Not a, a huge victory, but nevertheless it was a victory. At the Edinburgh Film Festival, the Israeli embassy donated £750. And you might think, well, it's a small amount of money. Um, it doesn't really mean that much. But it did to film director Ken Loach. And he withdrew his films from the Edinburgh Film Festival. People started protesting and campaigning. And alhamdulillah, the Edinburgh Film Festival sent the £750 back to the Israeli embassy telling them we don't want your money. These small victories all add up. Just down the road in Rochdale, in the last general election, there was a dreadful woman called Lorna Fitzsimmons who was hoping to win um, her seat again. She was the Labour MP, but more importantly, she was um, an unconditional friend of, the, of Israel. She had uh, her support for the Zionist state was uh, unrelenting. She had no time for the Palestinians and her views and her stand really upset the Muslim community in Rochdale. Now they're not in the majority. So it was difficult for them to, um, to have an impact in many ways, but in other ways, they decided to use all of their votes together. Many of them were traditional Labour voters, and they moved their votes over to the Liberal Democratic candidate. And as a result, the um, the the. Most